Uh, hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, the Lord uh, woke me up this morning and um, he told me, he said, uh, do a teaching on does Satan have power? And I'll prove it with the scriptures. Yes, he does. And it's important to know this. Yes, God is the greater power and authority, but it's important to know that the enemy has power as well. So you're not deceived. You'll find out why as I teach. Okay, so starting from Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 to 19. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. So, Jesus is declaring judgment against an earthly king, the king of Tyrus, someone who exists in the natural, on the earth. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom. So he's a man of wisdom. And perfect in beauty. Good looking. Very good looking. Charming. Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Whoa, hang on a second. How can this king of Tyrus have been in Eden. We know who was in Eden. Who was in the Garden of God? There was there was three main character there's, characters there. Adam, Eve, and the serpent Satan. Oh, hang on a second. So can presidents, prime ministers, kings, can they be inhabited by the spirit of the devil? And the answer is yes. It happens all the time. Oh, wow. And what's the qualities of the devil? It's full of wisdom. It's good looking. Charming. Appears as an angel of light. Okay. So thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The worksmanship of thy tabrets. Tabrets is a musical instrument. And of thy pipes. You ever seen the bagpipes? They're usually, you know, traditionally from Scotland. Right? So the devil here has musical instruments. He has pipes. Interesting. It's interesting how the Australian police symbol, that uh, star they have, is um, actually a baphomet. And to get over a certain rank in the police, the army, the air force, the navy, um, yeah, you've got to be part of the club. You've got to sell your soul. But a lot of people didn't know that. Why is that? You know? Why is that? We're going to find out why that is. And, you know, you'll see those agencies have their own little uh, musical division where they play the pipes. Hmm, interesting, interesting. The pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou was created. Also these precious jewels and all this sort of stuff. So the devil is associated with prosperity. He's got riches, he's got wealth, he's got looks, he's got wisdom. Hmm. Thou art the anointed cherub. Well, hang on a second. If he's anointed, what does the anointing do? It removes burdens and destroys yokes. It can give you supernatural abilities. Like if he's over the ministry of music in heaven, he can give you musical abilities. Hmm. Hmm. A lot of scandals in Hillsong, isn't there? Hmm. Hmm. Can give you those nice, warmy, fuzzy feelings. Make you feel good. Make you feel all tingly. Hmm. Interesting. So the devil is anointed. The devil is anointed. The anointed cherub that covered, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the 
stones of fire. Thou was perfect in all thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee, sin. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Merchandise. Hmm. Selling of merchandise in the church. Selling of God's gifts. Hmm. Interesting. And thou hast sinned. Therefore I'll cast thee as a profane out of the mountain of God, and I'll destroy thee. So the devil's going to be destroyed. His days are numbered. He's only got a limited time on the earth. O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. He's good looking. Watch out for the devil. He's good looking. He's good looking. He's not ugly. Watch out. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I'll cast thee to the ground. I'll lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of their iniquities, of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Oh, the devil traffics in drugs and, and human trafficking, sex trafficking, child trafficking. Hmm. Sounds like the Democrat Party. Sounds like people on the left. They want to open borders so they can traffic people. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Therefore, I'll bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I'll bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shall thou be any more. God's destroyed him. He's finished. But he's still anointed and I'll prove it. They can still give you gifts, give some music, make a famous rock singer. Make you a famous Christian artist. Make you a famous Christian minister. Give you lots of money and private jets. And people just throw money at you because they get nice tingly feelings. Just because something feels good doesn't mean it is good for you. Oh, I'm sure heroin feels good. It's not good for you though, is it? Don't do it, boys and girls. Don't touch it. It's not good. Romans 11, 29. For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. What does that mean? It means God is not an Indian giver. He's given the anointing to Satan. He's not going to take it away. So, Satan has something to offer. Satan can feel like the Spirit of God. He can come like the Spirit of God. He can appear as an angel of light. He can give you tingly things. He can give you money. He can give you men and women, riches, businesses, blessings. But it does mean it's from God. God doesn't take away the spiritual gifts, whether you're good or you're evil. Most anointings in the church are from the devil because the ministers have sold their soul to the devil. And the Bible says you'll know them by their fruits. It's interesting how they always calling for offerings and tithes. Yet when you need something, the money, the food, the provisions never there. That's not just the ministers. That's that's just the entire church flock. They're going to church every Sunday, Saturday. When, when you need something, they'll never give you anything. If you do go to outreach, it's some expired leftover seconds. Like, like a cane offering to disgrace. They're a disgrace. And, and they're appointed for hell. And I'll prove it. I'll prove it. They're not going to come and watch my videos. Okay. So, I'm going to do a teaching about the temptation. How, because of Satan's anointing, he tempted Jesus. And it was the will of God that he be tempted was the will of God. But was the will of God that Jesus would overcome that temptation and not give in, not sell his soul, not sell out. So Satan does have something to offer. He does. It's, yeah, it's not worth eternal hellfire. So Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 and verse 17. I 
think that's an important verse as well. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. God allows us to be tested. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. God gave him the instruction, fast. He's hungry. When you're hungry, the temptation's real, isn't it? And when the tempter came to him, that's Satan, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He's, he's trying to cater to Jesus' pride, see if he's got any pride in him. Oh, if you're really, he says, if. Trying to stroke his ego. See, had Jesus listened to Satan to prove himself out of pride and turn those stones to be bread, God told him to fast. He would be tempted to eat that bread. That's why you don't listen to him. I've got nothing to prove. I've got nothing to prove. Show me all these people you set free. Show me all these people you healed. I don't care. I don't care. God's not there for magic tricks. Don't test him. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God's words are spirit in their life. If you're not putting the word of God in your life, you're not following God. You've got to stuff it down in there. Then, notice how Jesus always rebuked the devil by speaking his word. The devil tries to come with fear. Speak the word of God. God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That word of God will turn into a weapon, and that spirit of fear will flee. That's how you stay out of anxiety. You don't take all these medications and all that sort of stuff. That'll make you worse. Speak the word of God. Fear will go. Do things that find the word of God, which comes again, which are associated with coming against fear, and speak them. And fear will go, because fear, fear and anxiety is a spirit. Feeding it with spirits of pharmacae is not going to help you in the long run. It's going to make you worse. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him upon the pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So the devil wants to, he said, Oh, we'll prove the word of God's true. Throw yourself off a, um, off a building and God will catch you. But Jesus is an idiot. He knows you're not to tempt God. God's not going to show up because you're not meant to test him. You're not meant to test God. You're not meant to provoke God. I, I, I know someone who's actually jumped out of a tree because they believe God said it that to them. Of course he's not going to catch you if you do something willfully wrong. Because you're doing it out of pride. You're listening to the devil. It's like drinking and eating any deadly thing. Don't go out of your way to drink poison. God won't be there. Um, again, the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Sell your soul to me, Jesus, and I'll give you all the world and all the kingdoms. Satan could not have made that deal if he, if he didn't have it in his possession. So the riches, the wealth, the fame is actually in the devil's possession. It was given to Adam, and Adam delegated that authority and that ownership over to Satan. God rules over king overall. Ultimately, there's an expiry date at the end of this age. And the Satan will have nothing. But man has given that power and authority and possession over to the devil. And that's how, 2,000 years ago, Satan could offer that to Jesus. So a sign of following God is not riches, wealth and honour and kingdoms. As they preach... God has promised those things, but we have to understand we're in, a, we're in a fallen world where possession of those things has been given over to Satan. So God has promised a lot of things to you, 
but God may not be able to get them to you because there are a billion of his people in the church. I'm sorry to say that. That's why there's a thousand year rule on the earth without the devil with Jesus Christ on the earth. So God can repay back what he has promised you. You haven't missed out on what God promised you. It's coming at a later date because the people of God have disobeyed him that were meant to deliver those promises to you because God works through his body. God typically only does a miracle when he has to. Um, so, yeah, if you're wondering, how come these promises haven't come to pass in my life? It's because Adam gave authority over to Satan and Satan controls everything on this earth. But there is a higher power, there is a higher authority. You hear all this dog barking and all this sort of stuff because the devil doesn't want me preaching this. So I'm preaching good. Oh. So um, I just wanted to point that out. You know, there's hindrances that come up when I try and do this sort of thing. And I've already prayed that I wouldn't be disturbed, and I was disturbed. Why? Because the devil doesn't play by the rules. Will that cost the devil? Absolutely, it's going to cost him, and I'll be blessed more. Okay. So the devil shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and offers them to Jesus to sell his soul to the devil. And this was Jesus' response, which should be our response as well. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Tell him to get stuffed. Tell him to go. Tell him, I rebuke you, Satan. I'm not taking a deal. Get stuffed. Then the devil leadeth him, and behold, see, after the temptation, after Jesus resisted, the devil left him for a season. If you keep resisting the devil with your word, with the word of God, he'll flee. But he will come back in another season. Understand that. If you take the temptation, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble because Satan steals, kills and destroys. The Bible calls him a murderer. He can use that temptation that you've taken to kill you. You, you don't want to do that. It's not worth it. I was tempted just recently. Um, offered wealth, women, all that sort of stuff. And I was actually shocked. The amount of roadblocks that God actually put in my way. Sometimes God puts roadblocks anyways. So I couldn't take that temptation. So it's actually, it's hard to go out of your way to do those sort of things. You have to be willfully disobedient because God will stop you. So anyone caught up in these temptations can't blame God. God was putting roadblocks in your way so you wouldn't take it. And you disobeyed him. And you you, you got to own up. you got to stop blaming everyone. You took the bait. Own up. Get real with God. God hates pride. Humble yourself before God. If you, if you have to deny yourself food to humble yourself, do it. You've got to own up with God. You've got to stop blaming other people. You took the temptation. Own up. Come clean with him. I, I just felt like, I don't know, that just came out from somewhere. Um... Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall they'll serve, and the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. That's good. After your temptation, God will send his angels to help and refresh you. For that time, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The first thing Jesus preached wasn't that, Believe in me and you'll go to heaven. The first thing Jesus preached was, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. What does that mean? Confess your sins. And turn from them permanently. Turn from your sins. It's only preaching half the gospel these days. It's not one-off repentance. Don't go back to it. Don't revisit that. Don't touch it. Keep away from sin. Satan will offer every true believer a deal to sell their soul. Yes, he has offered me many times. But for most, he isn't so direct. They have done it through their sin without realising it. Oh, God will give me the desires of my heart. Oh, he's a big muscly man. Oh, I know he's on steroids, jabbed up with pharmacaea, which is witchcraft, but he appeals to my eyes. Wow, look at that sexy man and he's rich. Oh, wow, wow. Just like Eve was tempted by that fruit because it was desirable to the eye. You, you can do a deal with the devil without even knowing it. Same with women. Oh, wow. Sexy girl. Hang on a second. 
She's married. She's married. God says all adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. They're going into the lake of fire. You think you get away with it. You don't get away with it. Oh, but it looks good to my eye. That's something that I desire. That's my desire. Really? God says don't commit adultery. Okay. Commit that sin. You make covenant with the devil. Before you married that man, before you married that woman, before you, you went out with them, and now, now, now you're lobbying the government against the domestic violence towards the women. Did he ask God whether it was his will? Did God tell you not to touch that? Maybe instead of blaming others, you should take ownership of your, your own decisions. Maybe. Did he fornicate with them outside of marriage? Did God tell you to do that? Is it the man's fault? Is it not your fault? You know, a lot of people have made deals with the devil without even knowing it. The Bible tells us not to get piercings and not to get tattooed. Typically, there's blood released and there's a piercing. What's that? It's a blood covenant. Hmm, that tattooist, that piercer, got purple hair. We're in some sort of satanic baphomet. Yeah, you think that's the will of God? They used to put rings in people's ears in the Old Testament to signify that they're a slave. And you are a slave. You're a slave to the demon that you've got that piercing with. You've made a covenant with the devil. Oh, you don't hear that preached, do you? Oh, the Bible says I can't have a tattoo. I'll get a lot of piercings then. You made a deal with the devil. You don't even know it. I know it. And and what was the result of that? You hate your father now. Funny that. Funny that. Well. Tattoos are blood covenant as well. Tattoos are blood covenant. I said it. While these female preachers are getting tattoos, they made a covenant with the devil. I see a lot of women taking their children to get their ears pierced. You ever notice that the children cry, they scream? I don't know, in my heart it feels a bit barbaric, to tell you the truth. They're dedicating them to the devil young. This is a Jezebel spirit, 100%. 100% common in the church as well. So Satan would not offer you the earth and the riches of it if he didn't have control over it, if he didn't have possession of it. He wouldn't offer it to Jesus if he didn't have it. Officially doesn't own anything. But Adam delegated that authority over to him. It's got nothing to do with God. This is why we have to pray. We have to seek God. Because we're coming up against a spiritual power that has stolen what belongs to us. So we have to go to a higher authority through prayer. Jesus can't just step in on our behalf. We have to pray for him to get to step in. We pray for him with the word of God, knowing our rights as a believer, and then God will step in. But if we're in sin, God is not obligated to answer us. Sometimes that sin is pride, so we've got to pray and fast for God to answer our prayers. Sometimes we need agreement. We've got to humble ourselves. So, people need to stop blaming God. Man gave the authority to Satan to this world. God gave the authority to us. Can't blame God. God can't step in unless we pray. We've got to meet the conditions when we pray for God to answer as well. Can't live sinful lives and expect God to answer all our prayers. We've got to respect his time. We've got to expect, respect that God has the blimp view. We've got to respect that some temptations and trials build our character. The Bible says it creates perseverance. Creates good characteristics. Long-suffering. Translated that word out, didn't they? People don't like it. It's the truth, though. 
So does Satan have power? Well, let's look at Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 to 12. The Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Take this stick, throw it on the ground, it's going to turn into a snake. That was the miracle Moses was to show Pharaoh. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. These are people into witchcraft. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in the like manner with their enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. So Pharaoh goes, well, you want to prove that you follow the living God? You've done this miracle. Look, my magicians, my people who are involved in witchcraft can do miracles as well. Whoa, the devil can do miracles. Yes, he can. He can. He can. When the magicians threw down their sticks, they turned into snakes as well. But the difference is God, God's miracles and God's power is more superior. Because God's snake that had turned from a stick into a snake ate up their snakes. So we've learned from this. Satan has power, he can do miracles. So can God. God's power is superior. This is why you don't do a deal with him. Satan can lie to you all he wants that he's going to overcome God's kingdom, but he won't. It's not possible. He's a created being. God is not created. He is. That's why his name is I Am. He exists. He always has. No one created God. He is. He's eternal. He's the great I am. He's the king of kings, which means he's the most high. And Satan and his kingdom cannot defeat God. God is all powerful. You know what? I've seen a woman online talking about deliverance ministry, and there's many of them, casting out demons. She always talking about testimony, casting them out. She declared that she was running a course online for people to learn how to cast out demons. She was charging $80. But what does the Bible say? Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Heal the sick. Every believer's got this commission. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Does it, did Jesus say freely you've received, charged $80? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast the devils. Freely you have received. You've received your healing. You've been risen from the dead. You've been set free from devils. Does it say, now, now charge $80? Does, is, is that what Jesus said? Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils freely you've received, freely give. Healing and deliverance we're meant to give freely. The Bible states healing and being set free from devils should be free of charge. Now I've got no problem with people providing means for them to accept offerings. That's biblical. But God provides his healing and deliverance free of charge. Because I equally hate all these Christians, and it's the majority of them on the planet, they never tithe and they never give offerings, even though God has prospered them to do so. That blessing, that extra that you've been given, was not for you. It wasn't because you were good. You know why God gave you that extra. They would happily pay a doctor lots of money to heal them of their sickness. In fact, most of the times they get worse. They'd happily give their hairdresser money to get their hair done so they can play the harlot. The Bible says a workman is worthy of his meat. A minister is worthy of their wages. And the wages just never come. But you'll happily give them to these false prophetess, don't you? They've got all the likes. They show their cleavage on the air. You share, you give, you bless, you pray and fast for them. The majority of people in the body of Christ do not respect God. They don't like sound doctrine. They don't like to be corrected. They like the anointing of the devil. 
Do you really think that these Jezebelic ministers are casting out the Jezebel demon? Do you really think Jezebel's casting out Jezebel? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe you're getting free? Really? That demon is still in there. Still in the women of God. I can see by the behavior. They're still playing the harlot. So what does the Bible say about women preachers? This is the, the biggest problem in the body of Christ, I believe. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 9 through to 12. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. Man, personal, masculine, pronoun. Mary is, can never, and a saint, an angel can never be a mediator between God and man. Because God made it clear in his word, there's one mediator, and it's a man. It cannot be Mary. If you put Mary in there as a mediator, you're directly sinning against God and you're worshipping the devil. There you go, Roman Catholics. One mediator. You put your traditions above the word of God. You always have. It's sinful and it's wrong. In the like manner also that women adorn themselves in a modest apparel. Man, have I seen some hone about in the church. Don't get me wrong, I, I like it. It, it. It's appealing to my eyes. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it when, you know, the ministers give you top stage on the on the on the, on the altar there and, and, and you're wearing leggings as pants and it's just poking out there. I like it. I like I'm sure everyone in the church likes it. Is is the focus on God? Or or is it upon you? You're taking the glory that belongs to God. You what you're doing is highly sinful. It's very wrong. You know, you can do that in the comfort of your own house, but coming to church like that, and you don't see a problem with that. And the, and the ministers never correct it. They never correct it. You get your tits out. You know what? I, I like I like that. But what you're doing is sacrilege. It's wrong. God told you not to do it. Stop it. Stop it. With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair, you doing your hair up for church, or gold, or pearls. Man, ever these female ministers I see covered with pearls. A costly array, because you're not meant to put the focus on yourself in church. But which cometh, becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman, women learn in silence with all subjection. So in church, women are to be silent. They're not to teach the word of God. They're to be silent. They're not allowed to speak in church, the Bible says. This is New Testament. But I suffer not a woman to teach or to usurp authority over a man, but to be silent. These women can be anointed. They can give you tingles. They can answer your prayers. They can do miracles. But they're not obeying the word of God. It's clear. 1 Corinthians 14 Verses 34 to 37. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. How can they be a preacher or a pastor if they're forbidden to speak in church? It's not possible. God does not contradict himself. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the Lord. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shame for women to speak in the church. It's a shameful thing for a woman to do it. What came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. It's a commandment from God that women are not to assert authority over a man. They're not to have leadership positions. They're not to speak in church. They're not to be pastors. It's a commandment of God. It was never Paul's opinion, as I hear slanderously reported among the women in the church. It's a commandment. It was never Paul's opinion. This is the word of God. You got a problem with that because you get your tingly bits and the devil's making you rich because you're sinning? You're not going to heaven. Why? Because the first thing Jesus preached was repent, confess your sins, and don't go back to them. You behave that way in the world. God expects you to behave differently as a Christian. 
You cannot be a feminist and a Christian. It's not possible. You cannot perform abortions and be a Christian. It's not possible because God said so. Titus chapter 2 verses 3 to 5. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behaviour as becometh holiness. Surrender to God's will. That, that's what holiness means. Set apart. Doing his will, not your own. Not false accusers. Oh, look at all the gossipers in the church. Stop it. Not given to much wine. Teachers of good things, that they may teach the younger woman to be sober, to love their husbands. The only place they're permitted to teach is the younger woman to love the husbands and maybe the children. To love their children, to be discreet, chaste, meek and quiet spirit, not loud. If a woman's loud, they're not obeying God. Keepers at home, that means a homemaker. Every Christian woman is told they shouldn't work for the man, but they should work at home. They should be homemakers. I see this feminism everywhere in all the churches and they're teaching women to be career orientated. That is not biblical. That's from the pit of hell. It's not biblical at all. It's not biblical. They should be working at home. Why is it so sinful to love your children and your husband and to obey your husband, but it's okay for you to obey the, the synagogue of Satan, who's the bosses at your workplace, and submit to them? But it's but 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 it's you see it is sinful to submit to your husband, but it's okay for you to be at work all the time and for your children to be raised by the devil. Do you see how wrong you are? Stop it. Stop it. This trad wife thing, it, 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 it's not a phase. It's biblical. It always has been biblical. It's God, what, what, what God wants you to do. And a lot of you, your mothers and your grandmothers, they've failed you. They've taught you to be feminist. They've taught you to be career orientated. They've never taught you to cook, taught you to be loud. They taught you to be rebellious. They taught you to sleep, sleep with your neighbor's um, husband. They taught you to dress like a hoe. They, they've taught you to be loud and obnoxious and rude. Yeah, I'm even saying that your mums and grandmothers are of the devil. They may have wore a cross and gone to church, but they're not behaving like one. You need to get yourself lined up with the word of God and not with the traditions of the church. You need to pull your head in. You need to repent and turn from your sins. You need to obey your husband. Obedient to their own husbands, good obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God not be blasphemed. You're committing blasphemy if you don't do all those things. You're blaspheming God. What happens when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit? You don't go to heaven. That's what the Bible says. You're blaspheming him with your actions. What does the Bible say about women ruling over men spiritually and, and physically in authority? Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12 states, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee and cause thee to err, they lead you into error and destroy the path way of thy paths. So when women rule over you, they're leading you into error, the Bible says, because they should be working at home. The Bible says, when women rule over you and are leading you into the error, that's what the Bible says. Deborah was placed over the Hebrew as a form of judgment by God. It was not the new norm. So why would God be given all these women Deborah anointings and mantles in the church to lead the church into error. Obviously, that's what the word of God says. Yeah, you're going to get a tingle. Yeah, you're going to get all money and wealth. And Why, why is the devil not hindering you on social media and you're getting like a million likes and you're saying you're shadow banned? Typically, you know, like YouTube, I might get one or two likes. I'm preaching the word of God, unfiltered. Why are you getting a million views and you're saying you're shadow banned? 
The devil's not stopping you at all. Why is the devil not stopping you? Why is he making you rich? Because you're in error and you're leading the people in error and the devil's just saying, yeah, go for it. Go for it. If you're, if you're leading the people of God astray, the devil's not going to hinder you. He's going to help you. The devil's helping you. That's why you're so successful. So, all these women in the church getting Deborah anointings and, and you know, these Jezebels are prophesying, oh, God's going to give you a rich man of Boaz. Is he? Is he? Is that God? Is that God giving you the the, the wisdom and the wealth and the, all the possessions of the earth? Is, is it God doing it? Really? And you, you, you're leading the church in error and God's blessing you, is he? Really? Really? To teach. So he's given all. So all these mantles are being released on the women of God in the church to teach the word of God. When he stated in the New Testament that women cannot have authority over men, so they cannot be pastors. They cannot speak in church, so they cannot teach in a church. God would not have done this. You know why? Because if God allowed this, if God was behind all these anointing and, and mantles, that would mean that Jesus sinned. Because he already told you not to do it. And these women, they may be anointed, yes, but they're not obeying the word of God. And there's consequences for the rebellion. And here it is in Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 to 23. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest thou, that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed on idols. So this woman is, with the Jezebel spirit, demonic spirit, it's teaching in the churches. That's a feminine pronoun. It's a woman teaching in the church. She's teaching people to commit fornication. In Perth, Western Australia, the Anglican Church, the Archbishop which they appointed, which I warned them not to, was a woman. What did she do? She hosted the yes vote for same-sex marriage. Jezebel, here, right here. She, she teaches people to commit fornication. And eat things sacrificed to idols. It's funny how all these female ministers are lead, leading the body of Christ into sin. And because people are getting tingly and they're getting blessed and they're getting money, they think it's of God. Remember, the devil can do miracles. The devil can make you tingly. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. God's given her time to repent. And she's not going to. Behold, I'll cast her into a bed. God's going to kill her. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. All the followers are going to be destroyed. Great tribulation means they're not going to go on the rapture, except they repent of their deeds. And I'll kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which sheareth and reigns the hearts. And I'll give unto everyone according to the works. God will kill them and the children. So why are they still alive? God is long-suffering. He wishes everyone to repent. He wants everyone to repent. Adam and Eve were told that if they eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they will die. Did they die straight away? No, they didn't. Will these people receive a spiritual death on the day of judgment? Yes, they will, and they'll go to hell. So they're like, oh, oh if, if I was really that Jezebel, I would be dead now, and I'm not. So God must approve of my actions. No. You'll find out in judgment day. Just because you're still alive now, doesn't mean you're not going to hell. That's my message for today. But I have good news. God is gracious. He's merciful. I'm a deliverance minister. God can use me as a vessel to set you free. Jesus Christ is the deliverer. He does it free of charge. He's the healer. You can get your healing as well. This is what it states in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 to 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. One word of God drove out every single demon. Just one word. That's all you need. One word. And he healed all who were sick. Every single disease. HIV, AIDS, schizophrenia, mental illness, stroke. Deaf is open, blind is dead, crippled, walk, dead will be raised. Any disease, any sickness, any disease, any anxiety, any fear and worry. You can get your healing now. Fever. God can get rid of that. God wants to heal every disease. Why doesn't God heal all these diseases? Well, you have to hear the word of God preached. You have to be going to church, don't you? And you have to be going to church that believes in healing and deliverance. If it's a mainstream, old school, friggin' Anglican Catholic church that doesn't teach on healing, you're not going to get healed. 
because they don't teach on this, because they don't believe it, that this is the word of God. No one's going to get healed without hearing the word of faith. That's why you go to church. Oh, why hasn't God healed me? I'll be praying. Have you been hearing the word of God? Have you been going to church? No, you haven't. God's not obligated to answer a sinner. The Bible says that. You can't follow the devil and expect God to answer your prayers. There's consequences for our sin. Healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, that's Elijah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities of our sickness. Every disease, every sickness, every demon, Jesus took on the cross so we might be healed and set free. So I'm going to give you a chance to repent right now so God will answer your prayers and set you free. If you've got piercings, if you've got tattoos, if you're a feminist, if you're self all stubborn, rebellious, if you're guilty of witchcraft, which is rebellion, just confess your sins right now, every single one of them. Lay them out. Are you disobedient to parents? Lay it out there. They refuse to submit to patriarchal authority? Lay it out there. Are you a gossiper? Are you a slander? Do you dress like a hoe? Are you being a hoe? Are you a fornicator? Are you an adul adulterer? Just confess it now. Get right with God. Have you slandered? Have you swore at your parents? Confess it. Confess it. Get it out there. Get it all out there. Have you taken drugs? Confess it. What's your sin? Own up to God and then I'll pray for you and he'll heal and set you free. Okay. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everyone here, the people that are repented, Lord Jesus, all the people that are watching this video, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your healing anointing and your deliverance anointing come upon them from the top of the head to the soles of the feet, the anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke. I decree and declare that they're healed, healed. Every sickness, disease, go in the name of Jesus. Every fever, go in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, disease, loose them and let them go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Cured in the name of Jesus. Cured in the name of Jesus. I come against every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of blasphemy, every feminist spirit, every Jezebel spirit, every Lither spirit, every Ahab spirit, every spirit of pride and Leviathan, every demonic spirit. I come against every spirit of schizophrenia, every spirit of mental illness, fear, anxiety, woes, worries, sickness at the edge of breakthrough, sickness at the edge of miracles. I come against every witchcraft, spirit, manipulation, domination, fornication. Every Lilith spirit. I come against every spirit of epilepsy and every spirit of pharmacia and every spirit of mind control, every mind blinding spirit, octopus, incubus, succubus. I come against every demonic spirit, every demonic spirit, I, every demonic spirit. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast the pedal. Go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go now in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. And you can never enter again in Jesus' name. Loose them and let them go. Go to the pit now in the name of Jesus. Go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, every vacated part of their spirit, soul and body, from those spirits be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Be healed in the name of Jesus. For those that are like this, you, you know what? You may have been set free and healed right now and you don't even believe in Jesus Christ. And you're just grateful for that miracle and you would like to receive eternal life. If that's you and you want to go to heaven, you want to get right with God, say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me for my sins. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. He took the punishment. And that three days later, he rose from the dead, proving that he was God. I repent of my sins and make Jesus Christ my personal Lord and Saviour. Amen. Now be filled with the Spirit and you need to follow him. You need to follow him. God bless.